So a concept and philosophy that I have remained very adamant about on this channel is to buy a watch because you love it. That is, to me, the most important element of watch collecting. It doesn't matter what other people think, it doesn't matter what the secondary trading market value is. To me, it just matters if you love the watch and when you wear it, you feel more alive. But recently, and I would say in the last five or so years, there has been this pervasive idea around just investments and also these crazy type of trading values that you've seen with some of these hype pieces, which have led many to believe that there are other reasons why maybe you should buy a watch. And of course, I don't wanna be say that there's a right and wrong way to do things. It's just my opinion about how I look at watches in general. But one thing that has been interesting is in the last year or so, how much has changed in the trading market values of watches? And what I wanted to do with this video is look at really the last six months to 12 months for many of these brands and really specifically some of those most hype pieces and the watches that have now dipped the most in their trading values in the secondary market. I wanted to do this because I think this represents a good case study for us to continue to learn just as an industry, as collectors, what's going on currently, as well as what can we learn from the past and understanding maybe how we can look forward at the watch market. Also keep in mind that many of these watches, when you look at them in a three to five year window, they are still up dramatically. So it is going to be all relative on what period of time we're looking at. Again, I'm going to be looking at mostly the last six months. The tool I'm going to be using is called Watch Charts. It is a phenomenal resource for anyone interested in investigating this topic further. I will link to it in the description if you're curious. And how Watch Charts calculates the health of the secondary market by brand is creating an index as an indicator of financial performance for each brand, where each index is comprised of the top 30 models by transaction value within a given brand. Given how this data is captured, the models that have been the most sought after for years are also going to be the models that are gonna make up the index for each brand, so keep that in mind. So this isn't going to be reflective of the entire brand, but moreover, it is going to be a interesting kind of study for maybe looking at some of these most sought after watches, most traded watches, and maybe most hyped watches, and what really is happening. So among the luxury brands with enough transaction history, the ones with the largest percentage drop in value in the last six months are as follows. AP comes in with minus 9.7%, then followed by a brand that you might be surprised to see here, Gerard Perigo, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Then following up third is Patek Philippe, down 7.9%. Rolex comes in fourth with down 7.8%. Then Vacheron Constantin next with down 7%. Then you have Moser next at down 6.8%. Tudor follows at minus 6.4%. Grand Seiko next at 5.5% in the red, then Omega at minus 5.1%. And then to round out the top 10, you have Hublot with minus 4.9% down in transaction value for their index in the last six months. So looking at the results of the top models by brand further tells us the story of what is leading these recorded metrics. With AP, the biggest drop was with a Royal Oak Offshore, the 264700OR. This dropped 30.4%, then was followed by a 15 400 OR, then the 26120ST, and then the 262400OR, all of those dropping around 16%. Then you had the Jumbo, the 15202ST, along with an offshore 26470ST falling around 14% in the last six months. In the case of the Jumbo, it is still theoretically trading well above its retail price, but it is now trading half of the price of its high, well over $110,000 where it was at in March of 2022, making it one of the most volatile watches in trading value on the entire market. Now, some of you might be thinking, why is Gerard Perigo down? Well, one of the big yet quiet winners the last couple of years was GP, benefiting greatly from the other demand around the industry with their Laureato collection being an authentic, history-rich alternative to integrated steel sports titans. The 42 millimeter Laureato in blue was actually a watch that traded above retail prices for a period in 2022, but has been gradually dropping since in trading value, down 19.3% in the last six months. Patek Philippe follows a very similar story as AP with many of their watches trading above retail, but the downturn hitting most of their hype pieces. Of the 30 top most traded watches on watch charts, Patek Philippe index, 
all but two are in the red for trading value in the last six months. Coming in with the biggest drop is the 5711R dropping 18.8% in the past six months, followed by the Aquanaut 5167 down 14.2%. Rolex is always an interesting case study when it comes to looking at market health. And while many are still trading well above retail, things have changed dramatically since their peak. One of the mascots of the secondary market boom was the Rolex Daytona. And among the top five watches from Rolex with the most percentage drop in value in the last six months, four of them are from the Daytona family. The Rolex Platinum Daytona 116506 has seen the biggest drop in percentage at minus 15.7%, followed by the 116500 white dial Daytona dropping at 12.1%, though it still is trading nearly double retail. The only non-Daytona in the top five is going to be the Sea Dweller, the 126660, down 12% with the Daytona 116520, and the 116505 following up at roughly around 11%. Next is Vacheron Constantin, and the drop here can be traced to the surge that we saw with the overseas family in the last few years, unquestionably benefiting from the integrated steel sports craze. Of Vacheron's top 30 most traded watches, 23 of them were from the overseas collection. And the biggest drop in terms of percentage was with a generation three pink gold overseas down 17.9% in the last six months. And just as a note, it was a watch that was never trading at crazy values compared to retail. The real leader of the pack for the collection was the 45 V Blue Dial Overseas Generation 3, which peaked out at trading values at nearly $50,000 in April of 2022, with it now trading just slightly over retail and down 8.5% in the last six months. So those are the top five brands and the biggest changes that you've seen in the downturn. But now let's look at some other outliers. On the affordable side of things, you have the Moon Swatch. It's still a watch that gets a lot of buzz, yet among them, the most hyped of all was the Neptune Edition, with it now experiencing a big percentage drop in the last six months with a whopping 51.7%. I did not inspect every single watch on the entire market, but from everything I could see, this seemed to be the biggest percentage drop in that period. A watch in the top 60 in the trading index was the Tudor Black Bay Chrono. In the past six months, it has fallen roughly 10% in trading value and now consistently trades below retail. The Longo Odysseus is down 9.1% in the last six months, though it still is trading well above retail pricing. Also, Omega has seen a dip in the Snoopy models despite still being well over retail prices, with the Eyes on the Star Snoopy model and the Silver Snoopy 50th anniversary model both dropping around 14% in the last six months. Cartier has also seen a downturn in trading values across their Santos collection, and many other brands have seen just relative drop across the board, but maybe not as extreme as some of these more hyped pieces. What is interesting though, is there are a lot of brands that have been relatively unaffected by this, maybe only seeing a couple percentage change, both negatively and positively. And these are brands typically not associated with hype and they've been pretty steady for the most part. And even with all the craziness going on in the last three to five years, some brands have remained once again, pretty straight to the course and not seeing a dramatic change in either a positive or negative direction. And this is really just scratching the surface here when it comes to this topic, there's a lot more to get lost in. But one thing is for certain, it does feel that we are now turning a corner where some of these most hype pieces, we can speculate all we want about why the prices were so high. Things are changing for the better for I think watch enthusiasts. The industry is still in a good spot if you look at the last three to five years, but things are changing. And I think this world where it was getting so hard to get some of these pieces and you had to jump through all of these hoops, it feels that we are getting closer to a more relative normal that we were used to before all of this was happening. And for diehard enthusiasts, people that just wanna own a great watch, I think that is encouraging news. As much as we want, I think, brands in this industry to succeed, I think it is also to f good to find a balance at times to make sure that people that truly love watches can actually get them. But all right, guys, that's my video here looking at the changing dynamic of watches, some of the watches that have dropped the most in trading value. If you found this interesting, let me know in the comments down below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it as well. Be sure to subscribe as well. We are closing in on a million subscribers, which is pretty crazy. Do appreciate all the support and helping me get there. Also definitely check out teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And how we're able to fund all these productions is through selling watches on our site. So if you're in the market for a watch, Love to have your business. You know you can buy a watch essentially anywhere nowadays, but we'd love to make it happen for you because it allows us to really make things happen here and allows us to keep doing what we're doing. We love what we do here. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.